So um, what we've seen, um, what's quite striking on the US labor market is that uh, jobs last a very long time. Right? We said average job lasts about eight years um, in the US. So it means that workers and firms, when they get together and start uh, worker-firm relationships, that's going to be a long-lasting relationship. Um, so it's something that both workers and firms are going to choose very carefully. Uh, on the firm sides, you know, they want to find somebody with the right skills, education, experience, fit for the organization. On the worker side, you want to find you know, the right location for your job, the right pay, the right colleagues, right responsibilities. Um, so, you know, everybody is different, all jobs are different, and so it's going to take a long time for the two uh, to get together. And we also saw that we saw that the job finding rate um, in the US was you know, was quite a finite number. So it takes on average uh, two months for a worker to find a job in the US, two to three months. Um, so if we want to describe the labor market properly, we need to be able to capture that. That it takes a long time for a job and uh, vacant jobs and, and workers, unemployed workers, to get together. The way we're going to capture it is with a matching function. Okay, and the matching function we're going to call it M. This matching function, it's a new tool that we are going to introduce to capture this process of matching workers and firms together and. As we'll see at the end of the semester, it's in fact something that you can apply to any market in which um, the seller and the buyer get into long-term relationship and any market in which um, you know, it takes time to find the, the right person to trade with. And so it doesn't have to be the labor market. It could be uh, a lot of other things. Uh, so when you pick your hairdresser, the same. You, know, you want to find somebody that you like that does uh, your hair the way you want, that is located not too far from where you are at the right price, and then usually people stay uh, with their hairdressers for a long time, they become customers of their hairdressers, and these are also long-term relationships, um, and you know, many other things like that. And in fact, if you think about it, most relationships are, uh, most economic relationships are actually long-term relationships, uh, not only on the labor market. So it's a tool that's going to be very interesting, very important, the matching function to I uh, think about a lot of markets. Um, so uh, this matching function M that we're going to introduce is going to describe this complicated process of uh, matching workers uh, and firms together. Um, and so firms are, are going to post vacancies, unemployed workers are going to look for um, vacant jobs and they're going to get together through that matching function. Okay, um, so we'll call it M. Um, the matching function is going to take, um, you know, it's a function, so it's going to take two arguments. Uh, we'll introduce U, that's the number of unemployed workers, and we'll introduce V, that's the number of vacancies, vacant jobs. And the matching function is going to uh, tell us that the number of new matches, the number of new relationship, is going to be the function M with argument U and V. Okay, so that's the number uh, of new matches at you know, any point in time, or the number of new matches if you want every month. It's going to be given by the matching function m of u and v. Okay, um, so what are the properties of um, this matching function that we are going to introduce? So first property that's going to be uh, key is that uh, the matching function is increasing in the number of unemployed. So if you want the partial derivative of m with respect to u is going to be positive. So your matching function is increasing in the number of unemployed. So what does that mean? What's the interpretation of that? Well, the land, the, for a given number of vacancies, the more unemployed workers you have, the more new matches are going to be made uh, at any point in time. And why is that? Well, the idea is that if you have more unemployed workers to choose from for a given number of vacant jobs, 
Of course, it's going to be, you'll have more uh, matches that are going to be realized because it means that you have more choice available, you have more range of experience, more range of skills, and so on and so forth. So obviously, if you have a bigger pool to choose from, from the firm side, uh, more matches are going to be able to happen. So we want the matching function to be increasing in the number of unemployed that are available. But through the same argument, on the unemployed side, if you have more vacant jobs that are available, if you have more choice, of course, more matches are going to happen as well. If you know you have 10 guys who are looking for jobs and suddenly instead of having 10 jobs available, you have 20 jobs available, it's very likely that more matches between workers and firms are going to be realized just because you have more choice of location, more choice of occupation, and so on and so forth. So we also want, similarly, another property that the matching function is going to be increasing in the number of vacancies. So the partial derivative of uh, the matching function with respect to vacancies is going to be um, positive. So these are, of course, key properties. Other properties, you know, that are, uh, that's going to be important and that we will see, of course, is that the matching function, if you have no unemployed and a certain number of vacancies, is going to be zero. Of course, if you have nobody to choose from, no matches are going to be realized. Similarly, if you have no vacant jobs, no matches um, are going to be realized. So that's another property that all matching functions um, will have to satisfy. Now, the fourth property that the matching function will satisfy, um, and one that will play a very important role that may be a bit new, is that the matching function will have uh, what we call constant returns to scale. So what does that mean? So this is a mathematical property. Uh, it's a property we introduce because it will help us analyze the model. Uh, it will be very convenient to have constant returns to scale, and it's also a property that we see realized in the data. If we look at real matching functions, they do look like they have constant returns to scale. So what does that mean, to have constant returns to scale? It means that for any um, scalar uh, cell lambda, What are we going to see? We are going to see that the matching function evaluated at lambda times u and lambda times v is going to be lambda times the matching function evaluated at u and v. Okay, so constant return to scale. If you scale each argument u and v by the same scalar lambda, it's the same as scaling the entire function m by uh, lambda. Uh, so that's a mathematical property that's going to play a very important role in the, in the derivation. Okay, uh, so I gave you a bunch of properties. What would be an example of such a matching function? So a typical example that we use in our models, both because it's simple and also, as you will see in the readings uh, for this week, it's something that's quite realistic, is a Cobb-Douglas matching function. So you may have seen Cobb-Douglas production functions, but it turns out that a Cobb-Douglas matching function is also uh, a, co a convenient specification. So what's a Cobb-Douglas matching function? So it's a matching function that takes this form. M of u and v is going to be omega, which is just some scalar, times u to the power of eta times v to the power of 1 minus eta, where omega is just some scalar that tells you the efficiency of matching, efficacy of matching, and eta is an elasticity between 0 and 1, the elasticity of matching. Okay. Uh, so this specification m of uv is omega times u eta v1 minus eta, something that we use very often, that's a cup class um, specification. And we'll see it's going to be um, it's going to be very helpful.
All right, so now that we've introduced our matching function, we'd actually be able to see how uh, the job finding rate that we saw earlier in the US and the vacancy filling rate are related to that matching function. Because of course the matching function tells you how unemployment and vacancies um, get together and at which pace new jobs filled, new field jobs are created. Uh, and so, of course, that matching function is going to determine the job finding rate, so how quickly an employer is able to find jobs, and the vacancy filling rate, how quickly vacancies are able to be filled. Um, so, to do that, we need to introduce a new variable, um, and that's going to play a key role during the entire semester. So, uh, now we've introduced a new uh, function, the matching function, which is you know, the equivalent of a production function, but to describe how market relationships are formed. You know, your production function tells you how inputs to production, your labor, capital, technology, comes together to create output in the production process. The matching function tells you how two sides of the market, seller and buyer, come together to create new if you want trading relationship in an abstract sense. So here the seller is the seller of labor, so these are unemployed workers. The buyers are buyers of labor, these are thirds, vacant jobs. They come together to create employment relationship. Okay? So in the same way that you have a production function so to describe the production process, that's quite, it's a very complicated process, but you can summarize it with a production function. Here we have a matching function that describes a trading process. It's a very complicated process in which buyers and sellers find together, uh, match with each other, and that will be described by your, uh, by your matching function. 